Hello, I'm Chris Shepard, the Artistic Director of Concora. We are in the midst of preparations for our end of January concert, Capella Romana, a concert of very beautiful Renaissance music to be held at the equally beautiful chapel at Trinity College in Hartford. In order to listen to Renaissance music, you really only need to understand one thing, and that is texture, the way that the different vocal parts relate to one another. We use three words descended from the Greek, phony for the word for sound, and either mono for one, poly for many, or homo for same. From that we get monophony for one line, polyphony for many lines, or homophony for same lines. In this podcast, we're just going to take you through what those different textures sound like so that when you come to the concert, you'll get some understanding of what you're listening to. Monophony is the simplest. That is just one line. And that is the most ancient form of religious music because it is Gregorian chant, that vast body of plain chant that we have from the church. Let's listen to an example of that. In this, you'll hear many men, imagine them to be monks, singing in unison. Sometimes you have octaves, but it's still the same melody that goes all the way through. As you might imagine, over the centuries, singers weren't just content with singing the Gregorian chant lines on their own, and they began to improvise a little bit. For example, they might sing the Gregorian chant line with part of the choir, and then a soloist might improvise a line around it, or they might extend the length of the notes in the Gregorian chant and embellish another melody around that. In that way, polyphony, many lines, was born. And for many centuries that developed to the point that at the end of the Renaissance, the rules were very elaborate and complex. The great master of Renaissance polyphony was the Roman composer Palestrina. We will be doing actually quite a lot of music by Palestrina on this concert. But before hearing the Palestrina, let's listen to the most obvious form of polyphony, something that you and I have both sung since childhood, and that is a round or a canon. This recording is Summer is a Coming In from the 13th century uh, English countryside. It's really uh, just a vernacular song. It's, it's in uh, Middle English. It sounds a little bit like modern, but, but not entirely. Let's listen to that canon. You'll hear one part begins, another one enters a little bit later, but with the same music, and so on, until the canon is uh, a full piece of polyphonic music. Now let's go forward a few centuries to Palestrina. It's the same idea, but just much more complicated with many more rules, and the canon isn't completed as a whole melody, but each part will begin with the initial clip. So let's listen to the beginning of Secret Cervus. In the first couple bars, you will hear the initial, we might call it incipit, the, uh, the initial uh, sort of introduction to the line. A new part comes in with the same tune, and so on and so forth. It's more complicated than a canon, but it's the exact same idea.
Now that you've listened to some polyphony, you will have noticed that the one difficult thing as a listener is to follow the words, to follow the text. So another form of texture, homophony, same sounds, developed particularly through the Renaissance. Now this is not unlike a hymn where you'll have a melody, maybe the soprano singing that on the top line, but with block chords underneath. The words are much more easily comprehended. Now, there's another composer on our concert, Tomas Luis de Victoria, great Spanish composer. His motets often feature this homophony, this homophonic texture. Let's listen just to the beginning of his Vere Languaris Nostros, one of the motets that we will sing. And you'll hear immediately how the words line up in a way that is much more easily understood. So that is an introduction to texture in the Renaissance. That's all that you need to know to come along to this concert, January 31st at Trinity College. Beautiful music in a beautiful space, and I hope to see you there. Thank you. <laughs>